Hey guys, it's Rick with Achilles Heel Tactical and today I'm here to give you five tips to better your grip when shooting a pistol. All right, so tip one, get away from unquantifiable grip pressures. Everyone's heard through the police academy or in the military, 60% pressure with your dominant side grip and 40% with your non-dominant side grip when shooting a pistol. These are unquantifiable to the human brain the way I like to use this in my class is I just ask a student to shake my hand at 60% pressure on their dominant side grip and the other student 40% on the non-dominant side grip. More often than not, the person that I ask to grip my hand at 40% pressure is actually gripping harder than the person I ask to grip 60% pressure. So we need to get away from these grip pressures. Instead, here comes tip number two. Focus on building principle around your grip. These principles of leverage and friction. So tip number two, leverage and friction. On a person's hand, we have a high point of leverage, a thumb, and a low point of leverage, the pinky. And when I shake an individual's hand, the high point of anchor or leverage is going to be that high tang and that thumb, and that low position is going to be that pinky wrapping around their hand. So these are the leverage points that I really wanna focus on when then I go down to immediately establish a master grip. So leverage and friction starts from the holster, where I can get on this high tang, throwing the thumb forward, pushing with the thumb, pulling down with the pinky, and driving this elbow down as I draw this pistol out, I have incredible amounts of leverage. So instead of gross grip pressure that's not quantifiable and has no control over the gun, I'm gonna focus on giving principle to my dominant side grip with that high and low leverage point. All right, so what do I mean by when I say gross grip pressure has no control? When I take this individual's hand and I just grossly grip as hard as I can, he's gonna take my hand to the sky and then take my hand to the floor. I'm gonna attempt to stop him just by grossly gripping his hand. Take me to the sky and take me to the floor, all right? Now what I mean by giving principle to that high leverage point and that low leverage point, I'm gonna come high on the tang, throw that thumb forward, push with the thumb, pull with the pinky, now take me to the sky, take me to the floor. And notice there's a vast difference when I do that. I commonly do this in the courses just so that students see what I mean by getting away from that gross grip pressure. All right, so after we've shown you how to actually build a good dominant side grip built off leverage principle, now we are going to talk about the friction. Don't overthink friction. Friction is just going to be the application from surface area to surface area. When I bring this weapon system out, I want that thumb to be high and I wanna bear down with that pinky pressure. What this is going to do is going to alleviate these two fingers to have the least amount of control over the front end of the gun as I break that trigger without disrupting the sights, all right? Now with the non-dominant side grip, I want the same principles added. That non-dominant side grip, I want a high point of leverage, meaning the right underneath the trigger guard. I wanna come up and under with my index finger, wrap under and pin. This high pin or anchor point is very, very important with achieving that high leverage on that non-dominant side grip. As I then fall into the lands and grooves and then bear down with that low point of leverage, I can come off the gun, and when from one fulcrum-like position, collapse and add immense amount of leverage and then surface area friction coverage on the opposite side of the gun. This is the master grip that I want to start my engagement with and then return to holster with. All right, so what this is gonna look like from draw is in one smooth, concise manner. I'm going down for my dominant side grip, focusing on leverage. Notice the pinky is the first finger to wrap. From there, coming out, driving the elbow down, feeding the hand at that high point of leverage on the support side hand, pinning that high anchor point, pinning the low anchor point, and then collapsing that fulcrum-like leverage down onto the opposite side of the gun. All right, moving on to tip number three. Quit spending your time out on the range trying to train out anticipation. Instead, understand it's a human behavior that it's ingrained into all of us. Instead of focusing on not anticipating for recoil impulse, we should be focusing on leverage and friction within our grip principles. That way we're focused on what's important, not disrupting the sights as we break the shot. Normally I see shooters spending time on the range, they'll put a round up here and try not to knock it off. Or they'll put a dummy round into the magazine and they'll fire, 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 dummy round. And if they see the nose of the gun fall, they know they anticipated the round. If you just accept the fact that anticipation is ingrained into our human behavior, and it's not something that you can train out, you'll be more focused on that high point of leverage and that low point of leverage, alleviating these two fingers from putting the most amount of disruption on the nose of the gun as I break the shot. If you notice, as I just grossly grip this pistol and I come onto the trigger and I say, now, the nose of the gun gets 
severely deviated over to that left side. Those low and left impacts as a right-handed shooter is most commonly diagnosed as anticipation, when really it's just the physical translation of your mental anticipation, putting not just mental input of telling you or the gun when to go off, it's also you tensing up on your grip. So when I tense up with these two fingers, the nose of the gun wants to go down and to the left, which is the reason why my rounds are now grouping low and left. So instead, if I focus high leverage and low leverage, now these two fingers can lift off the gun because I'm leveraging my grip. And I focus on, as I break the shot, just not disrupting the sights, notice nothing happens with the front end of that gun. That is why I'm so against training out anticipation. Tip four, a structured, not stressed presentation from draw. What we want within our presentation is to be nice and relaxed. I wanna stand at five foot six, like I stand every single day. And I want to present my weapon system straight up to my eyes. And as I do this, I want my presentation of my arms behind the weapon system in line with it, not offline from it. The reason for this is this gun is going to reciprocate straight back. And by having my radius bone or my forearm offset or offline of this recoil impulse energy, what it's gonna do, it's gonna take the path of least resistance, whether that is my wrist or the nose of the weapon system taking a direction of two o'clock or 11 o'clock, I want it to be tracking 12 and six. So as I shoot this weapon, I want it to rise and fall back down on the target, not ever flip. So presentation to target. I want this right here, my radius bone, to be in line with the back strap. I got my high point of leverage, my low point of leverage, and I wanna present straight out from my body. Now my non-dominant side grip, as I come high, pinning that high anchor point, then coming down to that lower anchor point from one fulcrum position, leveraging and then building surface area friction, I want to present straight out to the target, keeping those elbows in line with the gun rather than off. What that is going to do is basically the analogy that I use in my classes is imagine taking a lime and think about how much juice you're gonna squeeze out of the lime out here and how much juice you can squeeze out of the lime here. I can squeeze a lot more juice tighter where I'm stronger and coordinated here, meaning I can put more leverage and friction on that pistol the tighter I am to my body. And then presenting my elbows in line, notice the palms of my hands start to close in around that pistol grip. Just to show you right here, when I bring my elbows out, notice the meaty portion of my non-dominant side grip is now off the gun with my elbows out. But as I bring it in line with the gun, notice we have 360 degrees of contact with surface area friction. So to recap on tip four, make sure you're keeping those elbows in line with the gun and we want those elbows to be slightly bent, not locked out. The reason we don't want them locked out is we do not want to create any angles of lost leverage. This would be an angle of lost leverage and this would be keeping the leverage intact, straight from the radius bone up to that high anchor point of leverage. All right, last but not least, tip number five. A relaxed shooter is a fast shooter. Notice when I draw and present this pistol, there's minimal movement to my upper extremity. The reason for that is I want to be as relaxed and as engaged within my posture so that I am presenting in a consistent but controlled basis for my presentation. I also want to, in order to go from target to target or moving from a, position A to position B, want to be relaxed because when I'm tense, I have to relax those muscle groups in order to then move, to then build a new position. Instead of being tense up on this pistol to then just relax, to then drive the pistol to the next target, then just to tense up again, I want to be nice and relaxed, snap and drive the gun nice and relaxed. Notice that when I present my weapon system, nothing is moving. I'm not bringing my head to five foot one, I'm standing still at five foot six as I present this weapon system. What you'll find when you relax behind the gun is you'll be able to focus on things that are way more important than being tense or trying to use muscle groups that just fatigue within your presentation or engagements from A to B. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope these five tips are going to help you establish a much better grip and improve your grip overall when shooting your pistol. This should not be considered an all-inclusive summary of my training. If you want to check out training courses that will benefit your life and being accountable with firearms, check out AchillesHeelTactical.com.